your favorite pick of night two, which would be? One of the final ones, Peyton Wilson. He was a top 50 player for me. I believe he would have been a first round pick if he was healthy. Ian did a great job of laying out for everybody. The lack of an ACL, the other injuries he suffered. But as a football player, when you pop on the video and watch him, that's a first round player the Pittsburgh Steelers just got at the bottom of the third round. How about Adisa Isaac from Penn State going to Baltimore, yeah. going to the Ravens late in the third round. That's like central casting. The exact type of player that they want. Plays with grit, plays with determination, plays with passion. And you can't ignore, Joel, the backstory with his three young, three siblings, all nonverbal, developmental issues, but he is there for them each and every day, as is his mother. He's playing for not just himself, he's playing for a lot of other people. We talk about fit all the time with quarterbacks and organization and system and coaches. I don't think we give it its due when it's something like this, Adisa Isaac with Baltimore. It's like, oh, okay, that absolutely fits his style, everything he does. I really love the Marshawn Lloyd pick for the Packers in the third round. Partly because, yes, I love Marshawn Lloyd, and, and there's plenty of that. He averaged over seven yards per carry, by the way. Probably should have gotten the rock a lot more. Only had, I think, 116 carries last year for USC. And then also, it was partly that, and also, they get it right behind the Cowboys, who have a glaring running back need. The Cowboys pass, don't take Marshawn Lloyd, and then bang, in the NFC, there's Lloyd, pops up for the Green Bay Packers. I like that selection. So who you're looking forward to seeing uh, on Saturday? Well, we saw these six quarterbacks run off the board in the first 12 picks. Haven't seen one since. Spencer Rattler's next up, so we'll see if he comes off the board here once we get to tomorrow. That fourth round hits. Also, not many tight ends have gone. So there are some tight ends out there, and there are, as you mentioned, Joel, the Cowboys didn't get a running back. There are some other interesting names at that position. So those will be heavily uh, loaded tomorrow in the draft. I, I know I didn't give my favorite player that was taken I on we, Friday night. But did, did Joel, does this, sound, does this song sound familiar to you? It does. Have you heard this in the state of Michigan? I, I hear it every time. What is it, right in the middle of the third quarter? Is it? It's usually when things begin to get hot in the big house. You know what I'm saying? Is your favorite pick maybe Blake Corum? It is. Blake Corum is one of my favorite players I've ever seen wear a Michigan uniform. And you know his story, obviously, yeah. last year, not this past season, but the year before it. He had a Heisman Trophy season all teed up going into the Illinois game, which was right before the Ohio State finale in the horseshoe and he blew his knee out yeah and he tried it he tried to go for it in that ohio state game but obviously his knee was blown out his season was over michigan got blown out by tcu quite frankly and then decided to follow what is in that locker room those who stay will be champions and 100 percent personified that for the university of michigan throughout and obviously so many other great players throughout this national championship run uh, but he deserves it. He deserves to get uh, a spot in Sean McVay's offense for crying out loud in Los Angeles, California. So I obviously love that. Yeah, a lot of Michigan Wolverines. He, maybe him and uh, Junior Colson can share a place, one for the Rams <laughs> and one for the Chargers. <laughs> they could do that. So who do you think would uh, do well by taking Spencer Rattler on Saturday? Well, you you, I mean, you still have Vegas out there. I mean, Vegas has a quarterback need, and I could see Spencer Rattler there. Listen, he's got a really talented arm. I go back to what I was saying all the way at the beginning of the night, guys. If you go back to his red shirt freshman season at OU, he was going to be, you know, the odds on favor to win the Heisman Trophy. He was the odds on favor to be the number one player in the draft, not just court, like player pick in the draft. And it didn't go his way. Caleb Williams ends up basically beating him out in the middle of the year with that fourth and one run against Oklahoma. Spencer, excuse me, against Texas. Spencer Rattler has to transfer. He had to grow up. There's no doubt about that. But if he can go to the right spot, and maybe it's Vegas, he's a guy that can play in this league. Yeah, don't forget New Orleans have did some work on trying to go up to the top 10 to get a quarterback, all right? Derek Carr is there. He's been there. He's going to be their guy right now. But if you're talking about getting someone behind him for an opportunity, Spencer Rattler could fit that bill right there. And I want to go back to your running backs because there are a ton of guys yeah. that are going to come off the board. We haven't even talked about Ray Davis from Kentucky. Yes. A phenomenal story. Thousand-yard rusher, three different schools. Will Shipley, tremendous production at Clemson. Jalen Wright at Tennessee, who averaged over seven yards to carry himself. But I'm looking at a big back in Braylon Allen at Wisconsin. Because big backs are flourishing in the NFL now. If you want to get smaller on defense, 
let that big back go. The top 10 rushers in the NFL, tr traditionally the last three to five years, 220 pounds or bigger. That's what we're getting now with the big guys. You remember when you were a kid and there was magicians and they pulled the handkerchief out and just kept coming? Just kept coming. Kept going. That's wide receivers. Uh, it doesn't matter how many you pull out of your pocket, there's still more and there'll be more tomorrow.